Um, so if anybody is having any issues, um, just kind of look through there, maybe add to the, the text chat area. But other than that, let's sort of get things started. So welcome everyone to um, end the semester with your students on a high note. Uh, my name is Tracy Miller and I'm the Assistant Director with the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning. Uh, this is one of our Wisdom Wednesday workshops. So uh, that is something that we just try to um, pick an interesting topic, a timely topic. Um, but it's not all about uh, me presenting. It's going to be um, definitely a discussion and a, a sharing session. So I am joined today by Andrani Sanyal, and she is one of our graduate research assistants. And um, she has been um, helping me with um, researching some of these strategies. And she's also going to be monitoring the, the text chat area um, to help folks out. But she also has some things to share uh, about recommendations for teaching assistants or even uh, recommendations for faculty instructors that are um, that have teaching assistants. Uh, so let's just start things off by just saying, "Wow, we we we're almost through this academic year." And so, give yourself a round of applause. I'm giving you a round of applause here. That there are so many things that that we've been able to accomplish. Um, in, the, in the last uh, many months, um, working on our second year, right? Um, but, the, you know, just honor yourselves for a moment that, um, you know, we are at the end of a, of a difficult semester and we know it's been difficult for our students. And, um, you know, just let's end this on, like they said, on a high note, on a positive note that um, this is a, a great time for us. Um, and so what we want to avoid at the end of this time is, is the frowny face and the, the confusion and um, the, um, you know, we don't want to like put that negative um, out to our students and we want to keep things positive. And so uh, I just want to offer a couple general best practices that I think um, if, if you take anything away this morning, these are the, kind of the key takeaways. And um, the first one, no surprises. And I actually ta talked to Gail Jackie um, from, you know, the Writing Center and now the Husky Academic Sports Center. And her biggest advice for, um, you know, how to really work with our students at the end of the semester was, um, no surprises. Whatever you've been doing so far, um, you know, keep it up. This is not the time to to try something new, try a different technology. Um, you know, keep things kind of even keel. Um, second, communicate, communicate, communicate. Um, whether that's letting your students know about deadlines, whether it's communicating with your teaching assistants, communicating with your departments, um, just there, there can't be enough. Um, just, you know, stay in touch with everyone. And then just for your well-being, um, you know, exercise, eat right, sleep. Um, you know, Sarah was talking about um, putting up, you know, springtime back grounds just to um, make yourself feel like, yes, you know, the better weather is here and it's coming. Um, so those are sort of my, my big takeaways. Now here's more of my buckets, okay? So uh, one of the things that we hear a lot from faculty is the stress around final assessments. You know, it, it's, um, it, you know, it's always a big deal, right? You're setting up final exams, you're setting up, um, major projects, um, there's not a lot of time afterwards to do all this um, grading, you know, because grades need to be in. So here's just some s strategies for you. And after I talk about each of these, I actually are going to want to hear from you. So if that's in the text chat or if that's, you know, you want to turn your microphone on, um, that's fine because I think we can learn a lot from each other and that's where you know, sort of the discussion portion of our Wisdom Wednesdays uh, take place. And so 
Uh, similar to the no surprises, don't change your assessment strategies now. Um, if, if you haven't done a, um, let's say, a proctored exam or a um, allowing your students to do virtual presentations over Zoom, um, you know, it may not be the time to do some of those big shifts because you may end up with some um, technical issues uh, that, you know, is just going to cause that stress. Um, another good strategy is if you do have a final paper or um, some kind of um, phased project that's been happening throughout the semester, allow your students to um, share them with each other. If they want to um, just kind of put something out there where they're, they're sharing a final draft of something, um, or if they can submit a draft to you. Uh, let students do that. Um, let them feel confident uh, before they go into their, that, that final graded atmosphere. Um, make time for practice sessions or rehearsals. So that's really that idea of that, that Zoom presentation um, or perhaps a, um, an artistic piece or performance piece that's going to be happening and um, the students would like some sort of um, initial feedback or even just practice um, rehearsing their script or something like that. Um, so you can suggest that students do that, um, but make time is a little bit more. You're, you're putting value on the time of a rehearsal, so maybe you're suggesting that you know, the week before the, the actual, that students should all be engaging in a rehearsal. Um, so it's just a little bit more intentional when you're um, making time for these sessions. Um, allow your students to um, have study groups or create collaborative study guides. Um, and uh, sort of a favorite of mine is rather than providing a student with your study guide, um, have them work together on a, a OneDrive document or something where they're actually co-creating um, a study guide. And so that will help with isolation, but it'll also have them um, thinking about what would go into a study guide uh, that then would help them prepare for, um, you know, something like a, a final exam or a, a last paper or something like that. And then also just be thinking about now um, incorporating any student accommodations uh, that you know that are coming up. So uh, extra time on tests, um, creating any sort of accessible documents, make sure that all of that is buttoned up now um, to reduce the stress of the, the students, but also you that you're not doing that last minute when you have sort of other things going on. So um, now it's your turn to share out. So what have you seen this semester that have been challenges with your assessments, but also victories? What, what went really well? Um, I'll just begin real quick. Uh, one of the challenges that I've had is that I've been giving my students feedback in Blackboard. And um, it was like a big group project that is uh, due fairly soon. And so I, I emailed everyone, um, your greatest uploader, please review my feedback in Blackboard. And then I had one of our synchronous sessions. And then I said, yes. And I put them into their groups again. And I said, were well, you able to see my feedback? And the first group said no. So I went into Blackboard and copied it and sent it to everyone. And then the next group said the same thing. And at the very end, I said, well, no one told me that no one was able to read the feedback, and which was frustrating to me because it was out there for almost a week and no one has pointed it out to me. And I didn't know because I've for my other class, it was the exact same and they were able to see it. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a very frustrating moment because I was just like, this is helpful for you for your final project. But in the end, we were able to figure it all out. But still, uh, that was one of my challenges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that kind of goes to the communicate, 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 right? And it worked for one of your courses and it didn't for the other. And so, um, you know, there's a little bit um, of, you know, this might come up now. And so you can anticipate that there, there may be, um, 
you know, that, that may come up again. And so rather than, I mean, you're always going to be frustrated, but, you know, if you know it might come up, then you can say in the live session, for instance, you know, did anyone look at my feedback and could you give me some advice on how I could better communicate that to you? Because it would have been really helpful. You know, anyone else? can see stuff in the text chat. Um, challenge was not having spring break, um, for sure. It worked, to have, it worked to have students comment on each other's crafts in small groups online during class, though. I had to find one time for students to meet who did not attend class. Yeah, so um, it, it, you kind of gave, Melissa, you gave us sort of the, the challenge and the victories, right? A little bit the, the good and the bad. Um, yeah, I, I, I totally support the reason for not having spring break, but man, is the end of the semester coming up quickly. Oh, crafts, not, drafts, not crafts, okay. <laughs> I thought maybe, you know, you were having them do crafts. It's fine. <laughs> All right, we'll keep those comments coming in. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, student support. And so again, this is where um, meeting with Gail Jackie was just really, really helpful. And so I just want to share some of the information that she she gave to me. And these are just um, student support areas that, um, depending on what you're having students do at the end of the semester, there's other support units that are there to help with that. And um, and they have some final days. And so the Writing Center will be, um, we'll be taking appointments and will be available for students um, that final draft of their project. Obviously, the week of the finals, they are literally like at midnight before they're sending stuff. But they will actually be open um, during finals week um, up to the Thursday. And so that's that's pretty good uh, to have that resource. Your peer academic counselors um, will be taking appointments up to the week before. And so if that's something that you think the students will um, have some value in, make sure that they know that the week before is going to be sort of that last chance. Um, and Johnny, can you put the that link for the Huskies Academic Support Center, so everyone has that on hand. Um, and then supplemental instruction um, will be um, doing events and taking appointments um, the Monday and Tuesday of finals week. And so uh, whether it's um, last minute uh, math help or um, something like that, those um, Tutors will be available st for students the Monday and Tuesday of final weeks. Um, so that's that was sort of a lot of Gail's recommendations. Um, but as just some suggestions, and this is a little bit back to um, what we were just talking about, suggest to your students that they view their current grades so they know what's at stake. Um, you know, and, and sometimes that's looking at the feedback that you gave them or just looking at that grade and uh, making sure there's no surprises. Um, provide students an opportunity to make up work. Um, that could be part of your policy of whether you um, accept late work or not. Um, what I'm hearing right now from, um, from faculty is there has been a, a, a lot of grace and a lot of um, latitude um, with make up work um, because of everything going on with the pandemic, whether it's um, illness, family support, you know, jobs kind of putting in a lot of hours. Um, this is a, a great time to be um, a, little, a little gracious with the students. Um, and then ensure the students have access to all the materials they need. Um, and so that sometimes that's a review of um, materials that you may have availability dates set and now the availability is has been hidden again um, just make sure that you know again they they have what they need and if there's anything supplemental that they need um, that you know they have that availability was it decided that the grade of the s will automatically convert to a u this semester uh, 
I remember seeing an article about that, and I can't remember what the decision is, but I think it was decided that the um, that the the U's and the S's were were no longer a thing. That would automatically happen. But I'm gonna I'm actually I'm trying to jot that down so we can finalize that and get back to everyone. Um, so, any su student support challenges or victories? Yeah, and Sarah's saying she didn't think the SUs were still automatically happening. You know, one thing I did this semester that I've never done, and I don't know that it was a huge success, is I used Calendly, um, which is a where you can just do a web address and then it automatically integrates with your calendar so students can make appointments and they didn't really use it as much as I'd like to, but it was really, I knew that it was easy for them to set up an appointment. And so I did have some students who did that. It was just much easier than going back and forth about things. Mm -hmm. So I thought yeah. that that was a way for me to support students. You know, I have graduating seniors, so they're pretty independent. But um, anyway, I just thought I'd mention that. Yeah, that's great. Um, now you said you had you had some success with it. Um, what was the downside? Oh, I I think the students just didn't use it maybe as much as I expected them to. Okay. You know, sometimes you have really needy students and so it's a big relief to them. Um, but it was actually, now that I think about it, it's more my asynchronous students who used it. Um, and it was really good for team meetings because I required team meetings in the first week. So I could say, you know, coordinate with your team and then make an appointment with this link. Mm -hmm. And while I think you know, they all need to learn how to make teams invites because they're probably going to be doing that. But yeah. uh, at least for this semester, I thought it was good to make it super easy. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Melissa says she sent emails throughout the semester when I saw students not submitting work or not attending synchronous classes. Yeah, that's communicate, 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 right? They um, just send them those reminders. Um, and and you know, it's important and they know you're, you care because they can see that you've noticed that. Um, okay, so that led some students to being better at communicating. Awesome. See, it's because they knew you were listening. I just heard about it and it's working great for the faculty that I'm going to look into it. Yeah. Mary, I think you're talking about Calendarly. I still had three students who have disappeared. Yeah, unfortunately, that that still that still happens with some of our greatest efforts, right? All right, thanks everyone for great conversations here. So, setting expectations. Um, it, it's what we've been talking about, right? Remind students of the due dates and update the course calendar. So when you put due dates um, into Blackboard, you know that's going to update the, the course calendar. Um, you want to tell your students that the due dates are on the, the calendar, again, so they, they're looking there for them. Um, but when we're talking about the end of the semester, you know, this is where you want to be um, super clear that you know, here's here's the due dates for certain things that need to get done. Um, you know, whether it's it's a series of, th of things or whether it's like that drop dead last final due date. Um, you know, keep that in your announcements. Keep that in your um, that that final synchronous session that you're having. Um, be prepared for alternative ways to submit final work. So it's sort of your plan B or your plan C. Um, so if if something doesn't seem to work right and students are saying they can't submit their final papers through um, through Blackboard or 
if they're going to do a presentation in Zoom and Zoom isn't working, you know, just think a little bit about those those plan Bs. And, you know, we so we get a lot of questions on, you know, for some reason my students can't submit their final um, final paper and, you know, there's different reasons for that and different answers. Um, but if you're kind of ready to go with, you know, just share it with me on OneDrive or just email it to me. You know, if it gets to that point, um, there's there's much less stress because, you know, you kind of thought about those plan Bs. Um, I would say keep it um, in the back of your mind um, just because you don't want all of your students submitting things through their email because they think that's, you know, the, the way to go from the beginning. Um, just have some ideas of how you can um, go to that plan B. Um, point your students to your your policies and so maybe that's your policy on late work but also do you have a policy for um, requesting incompletes? Um, do you have a policy for how students may ask you for a letter of recommendation? Sarah you said you had a lot of the seniors um, that are going on to graduation and uh, this was actually a, a recommendation that I had from um, one of our staff that said, you know, he requires his students to request their um, letter of recommendations, references um, within a certain time frame. So he's not writing uh, 20 letters of recommendation um, in the, the last week when he's, when he's trying to do some grading. So anyone else have any um, challenges with expectations or victories? Yeah, I did. Um, I had a situation, you know, because I wasn't seeing students, I was a lot more aggressive about, um, I mean, in the asynchronous world, I was much more aggressive about following up. Like, you know, you haven't done the last assignments and, and, you know, there was a situation where a student was having a lot of problems and I did something I wouldn't have normally did, which is, okay, here's an action plan you know, contact the bursar, contact this person, contact this person, consider withdrawing from the course. And even though it was late, late withdrawal, you know, I contacted people, they said, oh, I think you qualify. And so I think to me, um, I was much more aggressive that way. And I think for this particular student, it was really the best thing for him. So um, I think, in some ways, because everything is done online, it's, it's sometimes easier because, um, well, because they're, the deadline's the deadline and they, um, I don't know, it, it just was different and so I thought I'd share it. Yeah, uh, would that be anything that you would carry over when we sort of go back to the new normal? Yeah, but I think in some ways, and I would have been very hesitant in a face-to-face -to, -face to say, hey, Alex, you know, you might consider doing, you know, but I, in an email, I was just like, do this, do this, do this. And because I could tell he was having a hard time kind of uh, figuring out what to do. And so I guess, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think I would feel as comfortable face-to-face -face being as directive um but at least it opened up for me like oh it had a good outcome so maybe in some cases it would be appropriate i just yeah. thought in this case it was appropriate mm -hmm. and so now you, you know you've experienced that and even if you don't pull everything into the new normal there might be pieces that you use yeah anyone else Okay, uh, so reflect and evaluate your course um, and it kind of ties back to what we were just talking about with your, your policies and uh, if you are looking at your policies and you, you realize that there was um, 
a, a last minute request that you hadn't anticipated, now you know. And so you can kind of go back and, and build some of those things into um, your course policies. And, you know, maybe that's if you were going to ask me for a letter of recommendation, you need to do it by this date. And, and so, you know, it, it's, this is really about just encouraging you to reflect and evaluate your course. And so, um, the kind of the research that we we're doing and conversations we were having, um, it's really the, this idea of stop and think about what you expected was going to happen. And then maybe think a little bit about what your students expected and, and whether that was that they were going to have some sort of grace period for, you know, past due assignments or whatever. And then look at it from what actually happened. And then, you know, tease out those pieces and um, think about how that would be different going forward and, and sort of those lessons learned and what are things that you're going to carry over and what are things that, that you're going to drop um, or modify. And then you can also ask your students to um, complete a performative reflection and give you some feedback. So it, um, it's definitely the next bullet point is like encourage them to do the course evaluation. But this is just a little bit more of, um, you know, feedback that they can give you, um, things that you're particularly interested in, um, and it's a, a little bit more of a, um, a individual approach, but also a softer approach where they're just um, giving you some information on on how things went. And you know, so with Sarah's examples, that student might say, you know, wow, I um, I really appreciated that you. Um, you know, took the time to come up with that action plan and, you know, it set me on, a, on the right course or something like that. Um, and then, you know, beyond just encouraging them to complete that evaluation, um, remember you can sign up for a CITL partnership. So uh, we started doing these partnerships in the fall and uh, you can have, uh, you can work with one of our staff members to um, improve your course, to design a new course, um, you know, or, or any variation there um, of just kind of like you just want a sounding board, somebody to, to look at your course or to um, strategize, brainstorm with you on, on how you want to kind of um, change up your course. We're here for you. Um, and Ronnie, if you can put the link to the, our partnership page in there, there's just um, a simple form to fill out to kind of request a partnership with us. Summertime might be a good time to do that. Um, if you're, if you at all care about doing some work over the summer, I'm, I'm not sure any of us want to. <laughs> um, but how have you all reflected and evaluated your success over the semester? You know, one of the things that I have done for many years and it's made a huge, it's just been uh, just amazing is I ask the students to write just a one page paper and tell me what you took away from the course. I say, I know, I know, don't tell me what's in the syllabus. Just tell me if there was an experience or, um, you know, something you, and, you, you know, they just say the darndest things, <laughs> but I think it's really helpful because it's hard to remember what it's like to be a student, especially when you've taught a course for a while. And so it's good to be reminded about what are the things that resonate for them versus what you think might resonate. So mm -hmm. that's been really just, uh, you know, no matter how long I teach, it's just amazing. Something else that I have done as well is I asked them to write a performance goals at the very beginning of the semester and then reevaluate themselves mm. at the very end. So it's just four questions like, what are spe four specific goal goals you have in the class? What are some issues you might think you would run into, especially with being online? And um, some like two other ones, what can I expect as an instructor? And then obviously it's not due yet, but usually at the very end, they're very honest and say, oh, 
I really took this and this away, but I also saw that in week so and so I I dropped off a little bit and I should have reached out. So this was definitely like a learning curve for me. But um, they are mostly honest and really self reflective and evaluative of how because I said you are in charge of your own grade, and so be mindful of that as you go along in the semester and really evaluate of be honest about that. So. And they usually tend to like it because at the very end, some of them say this was like really great. I never actually set myself for goals for myself. So this was really helpful to have at the beginning of the semester and then kind of look back if was I able to achieve them, why or why not? So. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I love that idea, especially like the way you're like, well, they're mostly honest, you know? <laughs> so Linda said she has them write in Spanish a letter to the next semester students about how to succeed in the course. Wow, that is cool. That is a great idea. Um, and, and by the way, we are kind of taking notes on all of the suggestions that you're providing um, so that then we can uh, compile a list of these great tips, but also kind of be able to share them with all of you afterwards so that we're, we're reminded. So we're taking notes for you. Okay, saying farewell to your students. Um, so, you know, initially when I was doing the outline for this, I said, you know, saying goodbye to your students and that goodbye just seems too final, even if they're in their last semester. So um, I like saying farewell to your stu students and uh, sort of the, the number one, you know, is always at the top and really be sincere and authentic in, in any way you can, uh, because students really notice if if this is the first you know sincere um, moment in the course you know they they will know the difference if you're just phoning it in um, so you know whatever way that that you can kind of um, create a a video a message an individual email you know if you have that that kind of um, you know obviously for like hundreds of students probably not an individual email but um, let them know that that they are being thought about and then give the students an opportunity to say goodbye to each other. Um, it, you know, you've really formed this community of learners over the semester. Um, sometimes we can be tempted to, you know, sort of our final announcements was like grades will be posted on this day and, you know, go to the discussion board and say goodbye to everybody you know as soon as they're done with that that last day we're all checking out right so if there's a little bit of time you know maybe the week before finals or something that you can either have a synchronous session or um, a you know a discussion board or even using like a fun tool like padlet or something to kind of do a um, you know, course poster board of saying goodbye to everyone. Um, let them do that to, to kind of feel good and, and less isolated at the end of the semester. And then as you're kind of doing this and providing these opportunities, um, remind students of what they did accomplish. Um, you know, and maybe a, a more softer um, reminder of what the the learning objectives were and and what they um, really it could be Marcel's the students goals and how they they've met their own personal goals and and the great things that they accomplished so that they that they have that feeling of um, you know their own victories and overcoming their own challenges um, so, so what are your ideas? Have, what have you done to say farewell to your students? Something I have done with my grad class uh, was to have a virtual happy hour. So at the very end, once their um, final was over and um, uh, yeah, then I just like scheduled one for like at night because we would have gone out with them to just like a restaurant or something just to get like that's what we sometimes do in our department but due to COVID it was just like everyone kind of on their own side so to schedule a virtual happy hour and which I'll do again this year. That's an awesome idea. 
Yeah, one of the things I did in the reflection paper that they write, then I always comment in that paper. Um, and I don't know whether they really necessarily see it, but I always make comments to the paper that are broader. I mean, they're not necessarily about the paper, but about them. So it um, takes a little bit of time, but it, in Blackboard, it's pretty easy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Melissa um, loves doing this reminder with students, our memory, memories are too short. And yeah, it's just, it's capturing the moment a little bit and saying, you know, we, we've been together for a while and, you know, we're going to miss each other, right? Um, Melissa, I used to do a potluck with my class. Now I use the last day of class to watch a movie or something, commun some communal experience. Yeah, so you're still, you're, you're translating a little bit for the online space. Uh, one of the things our center did um, oh, right before the holidays, and we always had a potluck then, was we did a recipe exchange. So it still was like food focused, <laughs> um, but it was kind of fun because you get to see um, what people, you know, their, their different backgrounds and their different cultures um, and come up with some great recipes. So that works out really well. So um, I'm going to turn things over a little bit to Andrani and she's going to give you some um, tips for um, some great advice for your TAs. So go ahead, Andrani. Thank you, Tracy. Welcome everybody again. Uh, I am a GA in the CITL and some tips for end of semester tips for TAs. So first one is check your own schedules. As a graduate student, uh, your own coursework is near completion. So check it on, check what you have to do. And so check your own schedule, exam schedule with your TA schedule so that it doesn't ma it doesn't coincide and it has you, you are on time and everything is exact date. You know the exact date, when is your proctoring or when is your uh, grading exams is date is. So the particular date you should be very, very concerned about as a TA. So inform your faculty about that. If you have a, co like if it's coincides and think the strategies which can help it out to solve the problem for and take the necessary steps. And second one is check your calendar again and again and again. This is very important to check your calendar. And next, evaluate your students' performance. This is a major step for our work as a TA. So see, check that performance of each student and find out uh, which have late submissions or no submissions. Or some of the students, they are few days, they are regular, like they are submitting their works regularly, but sometimes they are like for a few weeks they are not submitting it or they are they you don't have any clue what they are doing so just just check those and try to overcome with some strategies which will help them to uh, overcome those problems so nick <clears throat> so this so communicate with the students with all that things if you know they are having late submission just tell them the date and give them some time or communicate with them the next is Coordinate with the faculty. Coordination is very important as a TA. So schedule a virtual a meeting with your faculty to discuss about the end of semester jobs. Whatever you have end of semester jobs, make it clear and schedule a meeting with him or her to just know them that this is what I have in my schedule. This is what I have to do. Just let me know what I have to do. For that discussion uh, with your faculty, you will have informed the faculty in case you exam schedule coincides again i'm telling you that because you want to be make sure that you you are working properly and you have you are on time having everything on your hand then discuss students performance which i already told you like tell them that there's no submission what should we do about it late submission what should we do about it how should we tackle this problem how to email should we email or do should we make a makeup test for them if needed and communicate with them with other makes or should I send an individual email or a whole a class as announcement like if the whole class is how it's doing should I send a whole class email before the uh, final weeks like this is this is going to happen so just make sure you communicate all the problems and the good things with your faculty 
confirm the deadlines for the post of posting the grades like when is the last day to post your grades you know the date your faculty knows and you don't have to ask again and again or email them or oh, let me know is this the date or this is tuesday or is it monday so just make sure you know on beforehand when is the date and confirm it with your faculty ensure that the technological needs on that test day suppose technology is going to have some glitches so have that thing on your hand whom to contact how to contact and how to solve the problem so you should know on the test date if there is a, some technological glitch how to do that whom to contact how to solve that problem who is the concerned person you should have all that information with you so on that day you are not nervous you are not anxious you know what you have to do be sure about your plan and know what to do and if some students need uh, prop, like accommodations and need something just make sure they what they need you have those things in your hand let your faculty know about it and then they can manage it and your actions will help a lot of other people i think say that if you are maintaining your schedule a calendar and everything is on time then it will help other people your faculty your students who are with you everyone will be benefited with this and last but not the least is take care of yourself eat well hydrate yourself become little bit stressless by giving a, a little bit walk a stroll or or whatever you feel you feel like a 5 minutes of a break go for a music listen to a, some calming music come back do your work that will help i think taking care of yourself your mental health your physical health is what makes you these days less anxious and you are i think that will help you in future too uh thank you everyone for listening to me and hope this tips helped your tas for uh the end of semester thanks andrani um you're welcome tracy oh i see some Oh, just comments about loving the ideas and and great tips to share. And I think you can um, you can flip these tips too. It's it's the, you know definitely like the TAs could be doing these things, um, but then also if you're um, lucky enough to have TAs, you know you can kind of anticipate that these these are the things that are going to be um, stressing them out, but also ways that that they can help you out. You know, remember that they're there to to help you out with that. So, um, like I said, we're going to be compiling all of these ideas and and sharing them out with you. Um, but I I wanted to leave some time to just to kind of just keep talking about this. So so what what did we miss? What um, what right now has um, you may be a little anxious or something that you feel like you know, I've got this. Um, I'm a little anxious because I'm doing something brand new on the last day of class. Um, <laughs> and I think it's gonna be fine, but I, you know, when you have a guest speaker in a classroom, you know, you don't have, to, at least I don't have to worry so much about my students and their reaction, but on Zoom, it's just can be deadly. So um, I'm trying to structure things so that they have more background to engage and more requirement to engage. And so I, that, that, when you started with no surprises, I'm like, oh my God, I don't think- <laughs> Well, I, see, it's causing you anxiety. <laughs> yeah, but I think I have to do it. So we'll, we'll, we'll uh, um, I'll just have to think about that. And they're all graduating seniors, so they just want to be done. Um, and that's always a challenge every semester. Absolutely. Uh, you know, a, a couple of the other, the other tips, like a, doing some kind of tech rehearsal, um, and then, you know, just thinking of those, those plan Bs, you know, that, that you're able to shift very quickly. Um, but just sort of some engagement ideas. Um, 
this actually happened yesterday. I was having a meeting with Stephanie and her staff and we were doing some brainstorming. And so she just like um, opened up the, it was, and it was in Teams, opened up the whiteboard and we started like doing virtual post-it notes you know, up, up on the board. And, and so that was really engaging. And, you know, it, any of those types of activities that um, that you can incorporate into it and that the guest speaker is comfortable with, right? And it, with a guest speaker, um, we often ask, like, which platform would you prefer? Because we want it to be as most comfortable for them. Um, and then, you know, we'll try to work around it. So. You'll, you'll do fine. You got this, right? Our, our message is at the beginning. We did so much and we're almost done. Um, anyone else? It's quiet. Okay then you'll get a few minutes back in your day. Um, and, you know, just like I suggested uh, for the students, um, let us know if you have any feedback for us um, so that we can uh, keep giving you workshops and programs that are important and feature needs. Yes. Okay, I thought of this when you were talking about Blackboard. Um, could your center put together like three minute video about how students can set up their Blackboard settings to do what they want, like to notify them. And because I don't know if students, I know a lot of students have never set those up. I don't know if they know how to use them. I don't have a student account, so I don't even know if I could, I mean, show them, but I thought if I could show something and say, get out your laptop and do that, that would be great if, they actually use the technology um, sure. to help them. And I don't know, other than to say, check your settings. I don't know how to help them do that. Because the ones that are eager will do that without you prompting them. The ones who really need to do it, doesn't matter what you say unless you actually show them how to do it. Right, right. Uh, so yeah, we can work on something like that. Uh, we we have a lot of we have our toes in a lot of niu waters right and sometimes yeah. we try to um stay out of things that we're not a part of and, and supporting the students in blackboard is something that that we don't do but we recognize that faculty need to support them and so um one of the things we sort of been working on is um well my conversations with Gail Jackie is because we've been working a lot more with student support, but also um, with orientation. So an orientation, we've started to do tutorials on like, here's how to check your that's email, great. here's how to log into Blackboard. And um, so thank you for that feedback, because that's just another, um, you know, voice that we're hearing from, like, we want these things. So. Yeah, I just think it's, it's pretty basic stuff, but it can make a big difference in their life that they get notification about upcoming assignments and such. And if they don't have the settings right, it's not gonna happen. 